Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Claudio Relsano TV. Today we're going to talk about baseball today versus yesterday. Whenever I say yesterday, I'm talking about the 70s and 80s, pretty much when I grew up uh, in the game and fell in love with the game. To be honest with you, and again, Roberto Clemente used to say, and Roberto Clemente was one of my heroes, he used to say the phrase, for me. For me, I was the best right fielder in the game. For me, Pittsburgh was the best baseball city. So for me, this is my opinion, okay? If I were growing up today, as you guys know, I always tell the story, August 19th, 1973, went to my very first Pittsburgh Pirate game. And that's when I knew what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I saw those players, the way they played, the way they behaved, the way they walked, the way they wore their hats, wristbands, the shoes, everything. If I were an eight-year-old kid today, I don't know if I would have fallen in love with the game the way I did then. Now, let me preface this by saying, I love what I do. I love coaching. I love scouting. I love training. I love talking about uh, the past of baseball, the history of baseball. Very passionate about it. But as far as the game, the way it's played today, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, as, let, let's just talk about the X's and O's. Back when I was playing or growing up and watching the game, or even when I started coaching, small ball was big, okay? The bunting, the hit and runs, the squeeze plays, stolen bases, okay? You could think, think about the guys in the 70s and 80s who could flat out steal. Lou Brock, of course, the greatest, Ricky Henderson, Omar Marino, Frank Tavares, Ron LaFleur, okay? Even the guys who weren't known to be major, major base stealers. Phil Garner used to steal 30 bases. Lee Mazzilli, one of my favorite baseball players, used to steal about 30 some odd bases, something like that. So we had guys back then who were very good, solid players, but they had nice stolen base numbers. And you don't see the you don't you don't see very much. Uh, I, I call it again aggressive baseball. Now everybody's waiting for the big home run, and that's it. So the X's and uh, X and O's of the game ha has changed for sure. I don't like that. As far as the players, okay, you have your star players today. I'm not saying you don't, but in my opinion, the players back then were better. And let's just take let's narrow that down as far as. Pitchers versus hitters, okay? Now, the pitchers back then, now what, what do you hear about today? All these guys are throwing 100. And that's true. I'm not saying they're not. But it's a lot easier to time a fastball than it is a moving pitch, especially a pitch that moves late. There was a pitcher who played for numerous teams, played maybe about 10, 12, 13 years. I won't mention his name, but there was an old saying that, that when they knew he was coming to town, that the opposing team would send a limo to, make, to pick him up at the airport to make sure that he got to the ballpark on time because he threw about 103. Okay, and he was a reliever, threw about 103, but they couldn't wait to face him because his ball was straight and they could time it. Okay, now uh, back when I was growing up, 70s and 80s, and again, a piece of the 90s, the, the pitches moved. For example, a couple years ago, I, they, they showed on the uh, MLB network the 1976 no hitter by John Candelaria. Uh, Candelaria, uh, who pitched against the Dodgers and Doug Rao. Doug Rao was a left handed pitcher. Nice pitcher, you know, wasn't an all-star or anything like that. But if you, now John was, was a star pitcher in his day for sure. But watch the, ch check that game out and watch the movement of those pitches. Watch the, the big curve balls, the sliders, the fastballs, the locations of those pitches. Clint Hurdle, former manager of the Pirates, said not only to change speeds, but change eye levels, okay, which is good. So don't just be a thrower, be a pitcher. Those guys, every pitch had movement, late movement. There was a pitcher years ago, again, in the 70s, he played for the 71 Pirates World Series team, Luke Walker, who could not throw a pitch straight. Everything moved, and he was a successful pitcher, okay? So it's harder to hit a guy who has late movement and Maybe he throws, let's say, a 92-mile-an-hour fastball, let's just say. But after a, a diet of 76, 80, and all of a sudden 92, that 92 seems a lot faster. So I love the way those pitchers pitched the thought process back then as opposed to now. And even, like I said, in the 80s, a guy like Doc Gooden, who threw very hard, 
probably 97, 98, and then he used to throw that, that big curveball, okay? It, it, it should have been illegal, okay? Or a guy like Burt Blylevin, who had a different kind of curveball, who would make you buckle as well. Those guys were pitchers, and they were hard to hit. Now, so let's go with the pitchers of yesterday with the batters today. The hitters today, and I do a lot of hitting lessons, I do hitting camps, and I've said this numerous times on TV and print. If I told you that uh, I was the best uh, how do I word this? If I told you that I wasn't the best uh, hitting coach out there, I'd be lying. If I told you that I was, I'd be bragging, you know, something like that. But, but it's the truth. I, I, I'm very confident in what I teach in hitting. I'm very good at teaching hitting, picking out holes, fixing those, those holes. I see so many holes in today's swings, so many holes. But these pitchers don't seem to expose those holes. Back in my day, less holes from the hitters. And those pitchers knew how to expose holes, okay? I think those pitchers would, would really dominate. Forget about the Palmers, Seavers, Carltons, Hall of Famers. Forget about those guys. Go to the uh, second-level guys. They would have dominated in today's game. What's the problem with today's hitters? And I'm not going to go into a hitting lesson, but at least not much of one. But all they do now, watch them. They fly open. They uppercut, drop the shoulder. They, they try to hit these long, monstrous, high fly ball home runs. And you say, what about Reggie Jackson? Yeah, Reggie, but Reggie also had good mechanics when he wanted. These guys do a steady diet of bad mechanics. Or you'll hear stuff on TV. You'll hear this one guy, and he's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. He has a video, and he says he swings down on the ball. So this is on a tee. Swings down on the ball to create backspin so it lifts. And you see these high school, college, little league coaches try to teach that. But the guy didn't swing like that during the games. It's one thing to hit off of a tee. It's another thing to hit live pitching. Okay, so that's ridiculous to hit the lower half of the ball to create backspin. I do not agree with that at all. I've hit, I've had, I've hit six million fungos in my life, and I still can hit down on it to create backspin. You want to hit that ball as flat as possible, as much of that ball as possible. Or you'll hear the phrase, let the ball travel deep. Ridiculous. Okay, we'll, we'll go into a hitting lesson another time. Or uh, put your foot down early. Or you begin to move when the pitcher moves. All that's garbage. But we'll get to that another time. Again, I think the saying is, if I told you uh, that I wasn't the best hitting coach out there, I'd be lying. If I told you I was, I was bragging. So you guys get the picture. But anyway, uh, so I think, again, those, those pitchers in the 70s and the 80s and even pieces of the 90s would have dominated these guys too because of their hitting style and, uh, and the way those pitchers, again, they, the way they moved pitches in, out, up, down. Late movement, curveballs, sliders. They kept pitched backwards sometimes, which means maybe they would start off with a curveball or a changeup. Nowadays, they're just going out there and just trying to blow you away. And then look at the hitters. Do me a favor. Go to the 80s and look at uh, this week in baseball and watch those guys, how they hit. A George Brett, okay, a Dwight Evans, uh, Mike Schmidt. So I'm talking about guys who had some power, okay, but, but just watch the way they stayed. They kept that front shoulder closed. They had great extension, great plate coverage, okay? And they still, back then, the, the strikeout numbers weren't as high besides Nolan Ryan, James Rodney Richard, because those guys didn't have many holes in their swing. It wasn't the fault of the pitchers that there weren't that many strikeouts. It was to the credit to the hitters, okay? Um, so again, look at the hitting styles from the early 80s to present, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And again, one of these days, we're going to do a video of me talking about hitting and going doing a hitting lesson basically uh, with you on my channel here. So the X and O's I'm not crazy about. I'm not crazy about the pitching, the way they just rear, rear back and throw it as hard as they can, and the hitters are swinging for all they can. It's either home run, pop up, or strikeout. There was one game, there was one game where the two subpar major league pitchers, nothing great. I think there was four or five pitchers in the game, all in 22 strikeouts, 22 strikeouts, something like 10, 12 hits. I think the past couple of years, if I'm not mistaken, there have been more strikeouts per game, or overall, more strikeouts than there were hits. Think about that. Crazy. And now hitting is being taught more than ever. But unfortunately, in my opinion, it's the worst taught thing in sports. Worst taught thing in sports. And another thing that I miss is the flair of the players. I mentioned Lee Mazzilli. Watch the 1979 All-Star game when he had a walk. 
he spun the he hit the knob and it would pin it would spin like a pinwheel right or like a wheel or a Dave Parker with the snatch catches and the wristbands and the white shoes Ricky Henderson with the snatch catches Barry Bonds later on with the snatch catches again Mazzilli with the basket catches Roberto Clemente with the basket catches Willie Mays with the basket catches you can call them hot dogs call them whatever you want Reggie Jackson will hit a ball a mile and stand there and watch it wasn't as annoying as maybe some of the guys who do it now. But but I'm okay when they do it, okay? As long as you don't point at the other team and all that kind of stuff. That, because you're trying to rile people up, you don't want to do that. I don't mind somebody doing that. I, I remember a few years ago, we had a game in Florida. It was a back and forth game. The opposing team made a big comeback and his kid hit a home run and he did the bat flip. I wasn't mad. He was excited. He was, he was showing his exuberance, okay? He wasn't mouthing off to us. I get it. I don't like... When a guy, you know, like the unwritten unwritten uh, baseball rules, which is another thing that I'm not crazy about. You can't bunt if you're up three or down three. You can't steal a base. or I, I, I can't stand that. One time, we had a game, we had a doubleheader. And I'm not jumping around here. I'm just telling you the difference of my mentality compared to what's going on today. We had a game, doubleheader. I had two pitch. I had really two pitchers and one thrower for a doubleheader. So we're winning this game pretty good. My, my player says, he's, hey, coach, if we get out of here with a 5-10 run rule in five innings, I can start the next game. I said, okay. So, yeah, we stole a little bit, made sure we get out of there. We won by 10 runs. The opposing coach was crying. The other team was crying. What, am I supposed to call timeout and say, look, we only have a couple pitchers, so we got to get out of here early. Do you mind if we get, you know, we only play five innings, do the 10-run rule? Okay, so I can start my pitcher again. Do you mind if we do that? I have to ask permission. Another time we were playing a team in Ohio, we were down uh, eight nothing, and I, I always tell my guys if we're up ten, score eleven. If we're down ten, score eleven. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So I, um, our guys kept going. We kept trying. So it was eight to two, eight to three, eight to four. We did a hit and run. After the inning, and it was at 8-5, after the inning, the coach comes over to me and he says, I'm disrespecting the game. Now, how in the hell am I disrespecting the game? I got mad. I said, why am I disrespecting the game? He says, because you're, you're hitting, running, and stealing when you're down 8-2. to two. I said, I'm trying to win the game. I'm respecting the game. Do you want me to just pack it in as soon as we're done 8? Tell my guys, hey, we're done. We're finished. Let's pack it in. Let Because the, the other team was swinging. They were trying to score runs, but my team was not allowed to. The unwritten rules of baseball. Ridiculous. Now, we lost that game, I believe, 12-9. to nine. Okay, but I wasn't disrespecting the game. John Calipari, the head coach of the University of Kentucky, has a big sign on his wall. It says, coach your team. I coach my team. I'm not worried about the other team. Okay, ridiculous. And then I remember last year, I believe Tatis uh, hit a grand slam. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was him for San Diego. It was a 3-0 count. His team was up, I don't know, seven runs, whatever. He hit a grand slam. And major news, he swung in a 3-0, hit a grand slam, and his own coach was mad at him. The opposing coach was mad at him. Why? Why should they be mad at him? Okay, he, he is paid to play, not to take the foot off the pedal. Now, if he had hit a grand slam and pointed to the opposing team or made a gesture to the pitcher, I get that. You're inciting, you're trying to start trouble. I get that. He was playing the game. I tell my team, play. Okay, don't worry about the score. If your parents, friend, fan, girlfriend comes to a game late, I don't want them to know what the score is by watching your body language or, or how we're playing. Just play hard all the time. Okay, so what did Tatis do so bad? He had a grand slam. And, and they made it seem like, like he just did something so bad. And baseball is hurting itself by putting the foot on not showing exuberance, not showing... Uh, emotion or anything like that. And, and that bothers me. Uh, again, I'm not saying to start anything with the other team, but everybody comes so sensitive. Everything, like with me, my teams, you can pound us, but all of our wins have to be nail biters, finger biters. No. But again, baseball is is killing itself by 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 having that attitude, the unwritten rules. If it's if there's a no hitter, you know, you you can't I remember several years ago a guy had a no hitter. They were winning, I believe the, the no hitter team was winning like two to one, two nothing. And a guy laid down a bunt. Man, it was major news. He was disrespecting the game. Disrespecting the game is not trying. That's when you disrespect the game. 
this disrespecting the game is when you don't you don't care if you win or lose or you don't try or if you're down five pack it in no that's not how my team goes but that's the game and the unwritten rules you can't steal a base if you're up five after the fifth or all these damn things there's an actual book written about that which i won't read i do my thing i coach my team i was really lucky blessed to grow up in an era Willie Stargell was not a, a, a verbal guy as far as anything, you know, a, 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 a writer's dream or anything. I mean, he gave some nice quotes, obviously, but he had a personality. He had an it factor. Mike Schmidt had an it factor. Johnny Bench, you say the word bench, conjures up all kind of memories, okay? Now, Pete Rose played a little bit differently. You know, he used to dive in the second base and all that, or short, or second base and third base and all that kind of stuff. He had his way of being colorful. Um, again, those guys had a flair for the game, and you watched them. A Reggie Jackson, even with the wristbands and the white shoes, were at the All-Star game. Remember, Steve Garvey wore the white shoes. and Little things like that add to the game. Nowadays, you're supposed to act depressed if you hit a home run. You're supposed to be upset if you win a game. And I, you know what? Enough of that. Go out, enjoy the game, have fun, show some emotion, okay, uh, show some emotion. I don't know if these guys are capable of being colorful or not. I don't know. But I know in my day they were. I know in my day they were, and you were attracted to them. You watched them. You read about them, and you wanted to watch them again and pay your money. It's entertainment. It's entertainment, okay? They are there to entertain us, all right? So, again, I'm so lucky that I grew up in the era that I did. I, I said a lot here today. But in the 70s, 80s, and piece of the 90s, fantastic baseball. And it was well played. The skill level was good. The, the entertainment was great. Uh, the X's and O's were very good. Um, and, and, and I miss those days. I miss those type players. Uh, Jack Clark. I forgot about him. Uh, Jack the Ripper. I used to love watching him play. Um, th there was all kind of guys uh, that, that, that had that thing about them. And, and, and I miss that. And uh, the coaches, the Martins, the Herzogs, Williams, Murtals, Tanners, you know, Lasorda, those guys, La Russa, a little bit later on, Joe Torre a little bit later on too. But, um, you know, it, it was just a great era. And I'm so grateful that I grew up in that era. Well, that's my take. Again, remember that phrase, for me, these are my feelings, my thoughts. But give those uh, 70s and 80s game, games a look and see if you can see what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Claudio Relsano TV. And uh, don't forget to go to my website, ClaudioRelsano.com, to check out our shows, The Boxing Authority, uh, on Vive, on live.vive television network. And then check out my other podcast, uh, my two podcasts, Claudio Rossano Show, where I interview a lot of sports legends and friends on my website, ClaudioRelsano.com. And also Monday Night Impact, which I'm going to be doing here in a little bit today. Uh, you check out uh, ClaudioRelsano.com. You can click on that link and check that show out. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to the channel. I hope you are enjoying it as much as I enjoy bringing this content to you. Talk to you soon.